Navigational radars use two bands in the microwave spectrum, the X-band and S-band. Radars using the short wavelength X-band exhibit good angular resolution, but are susceptible to the effects of rain and snow, resulting in greater attenuation. However, attenuation is minimal with radars working on the longer wavelength S-band, making them less susceptible to interference from rain and snow. The IMO has revised its performance standard for navigational radars. This new standard applies to all such radars fitted after July 1, 2008. What is known as the radar image is displayed in the center of the screen. Look at the upper left-hand side of the screen. Here, information such as the range scale settings, motion display mode, and azimuth display mode are shown. On the lower left-hand side of the screen, the gain, STC, FTC, and the tracking mode settings are displayed. On the upper right-hand side of the screen, information on the position and bearing mode of the cursor mark, relative bearing, true bearing, and the off-center mode are displayed. On the lower right-hand side of the screen, the EBL direction and bearing mode and the VRM distance are displayed. Finally, on the far right-hand side of the screen, the speed, course and position of your own ship are shown. It's also possible to display information on any number of acquired target ships. To change from the relative mode, RM, to true mode, TM, left-click RM at the upper left-hand side of the screen. As the mode changes to TM, the own ship position is offset in a direction opposite of the own ship's course. Stationary targets like land are fixed on the screen, whereas the own ship position moves according to its speed, heading, and the effects of wind and current. As the own ship position reaches the center of the screen, it's reset to the direction opposite of the own ship course after taking into account the effects of present wind conditions. Select one of the available azimuth modes to display the radar image you desire. The north up display positions north at the top of the screen. Note that in this mode, fixed targets do not move, making it easy to compare the display with charts of the area and read the true azimuth of a distant target at a glance. When switched to the head-up display, the heading is shown at the top of the screen, that is, zero degrees on the fixed azimuth circle. Fixed targets are displayed in the direction own ship is heading, providing the same range of vision as seen from the bridge of own ship, making this setting suitable for lookout duty. Head-up mode cannot be selected when the instrument is in true motion mode. In the course-up mode, own ship's course is positioned at the top of the screen. As with the true azimuth display, fixed targets are displayed without stagger, even if own ship is yawing. Also, the direction of the ship's heading moves only when a change is made in own ship's course. To change course, select Course Up Mode by pressing the Azimuth Mode button several times. Before operating a navigational radar, confirm that all basic data from the requisite onboard instruments have been input. Data items include GPS and gyro compass data, own ship speed, and AIS information.
The range scale can be changed to suit the navigational requirement. Gain, tuning, brilliance, sea and rain anti-clutter levels are changed by pressing their switches. It's important to obtain needed information by adjusting the STC to obtain the best radar image in various sea states. Normally these functions operate automatically. Adjusting the sea clutter knob allows you to understand the state of the sea and determine sea wave propagation directions. The two functions, EBL and VRM, are used to measure bearing and distance. Here we'll explain the measurement of bearing and distance between own ship and the target and between two points on the radar display using EBL and VRM. Select EBL1 or EBL2. Next, select Off Center. Set the EBL origin to one of the targets, and set the outside edge of EBL and VRM to the other target. If own ship is drifting off the set course, it's easy to determine the influence of sea currents and winds by placing a cursor line parallel to the heading line of own ship at a safe distance from a conspicuous target, like a steep headland, the tip of a breakwater, an isolated rock or islet. Use of a parallel index line is also effective for maintaining a safe distance from the coastline when own ship is coasting. Indicate the line of parallel index. Set the line to the heading of own ship using the electronic cursor knob and EBL knob. Use the variable range marker and EBL knob to adjust the parallel line interval and set the line on the target. Whenever the target slips off the parallel index line, the course of own ship should be adjusted. The trail's length is a record of the past position and speed of the other target ship, which is useful for collision avoidance. Trail's length has four settings, from a minimum 0.5 minutes ago to a maximum 6 minutes ago. Up to 20 marks can be displayed. Maintaining waypoints with longitude and latitude Marks can be used to indicate anchoring points or course altering points. Picking up a target is done manually. While the vector length shows the target's past speed, it can be changed to a suitable length for easy display depending on the situation. The target's path speed and direction can be checked visually, making it possible to estimate course and degree of collision risk. ARPA displays the movement, course and speed of targets by radar image analysis to determine the risk of each. It's necessary to use either the relative vector mode or true vector mode from the viewpoints of collision risk estimation and collision avoidance. The relative vector display mode can be used to find the closest point of approach, CPA, and time of closest point of approach, TCPA. This enables the relative vector display mode to keep under observation all nearby ships that pose a collision danger. The true vector display mode shows the speed and course of targets and the aspect angle between own ship and targets. As such, 
it's possible to grasp what's defined by the law for preventing collisions at sea as ships encounter situations. The relation between own ship and a crossing vessel, an overtaking vessel, one travelling in the same direction and one approaching. ARPA can capture and track up to 50 targets and display all dangerous situations, displaying each with a symbol and sounding an alarm. ARPA has a trial maneuver function. When a potential dangerous situation between own ship and other vessels is identified, ship handling for collision avoidance can be examined using trial maneuver. It's necessary to include sufficient distance in time in the minimum CPA and TCPA. Initial evasive distance must always be adequate. In periods of good visibility, get in the habit of comparing the radar image with what you actually see. This knowledge will help you grasp target movements using the radar display alone when navigating in poor visibility. Training that embraces a variety of circumstances is recommended. When a new target has been picked up, it may take three minutes or more for its vector to reach a prescribed accuracy. Also, if either the target vessel or own ship has changed course, it may take a few seconds for the vector to be rendered accurately. In true vector mode, the direction of the target's vector stands for its true course, while the vector length is proportionate to its speed. This makes it possible to correctly grasp movements of nearby vessels. A relative vector, meanwhile, does not represent the target's true movement, but simply shows a relative position between own ship and the target. In other words, if a vector points toward own ship, it should be considered a dangerous target. In relative vector mode, it's possible to grasp at a glance where the target's CPA limit is. The MSC 79, 79th Marine Safety Committee, has revised the performance standards for navigational radars. Note the following. The reference point for the measurement of a target's distance and bearing has been changed from the radar antenna position to CCRP, Consistent Common Reference Point. As a result, the position of the EBL and VRM is displayed as the distance and bearing from CCRP. Because the radar antenna position differs from the CCRP, the radar image appears off the center of the screen. The radar image's effective diameter has been reduced from 340 mm to 320 mm. It's now mandatory that the radar display indicates basic navigational information. The number of targets that can be acquired by the ARPA has been increased, and the number of targets that can be displayed by the AIS has also changed. Note that the functions formerly displayed in the ARPA have now become standard elements incorporated into the radar's new target tracking, TT, function. <laughs>